Yang Chen, our main protagonist, leans against his car with a packing box in his hand. Chen was very saddened as he was having a bad day. He had just lost his job that day. He wonders why such unfortunate situations always happen to him. After dwelling a little on the loss of his job, he decides to move on no matter how difficult it might be. His way of moving on was going back to car hailing, a system put in place to offer a form of transportation order. He enters his car and positions his phone in his front. The car hailing app informs him of an order for transportation a kilometer away from him. He accepted the project after which the app described the location he has to go. In the car hailing system, one will surely meet a lot of people, strange people. Yang Chen soon arrived at the location and called his client to inform the person of his arrival. The client simply told him she would still take 20 minutes to finish up her makeup. His expression shows he was not very happy. Little did he know that the meeting was the start of a new change in his life even though there are still people who did not like him. The lady inside the vehicle complained about his service. She complained about his driving that seemed unprofessional and also that he was going too slow. As she gets out of the car, she threatens to give him a bad review as well as get him arrested by the police. Ironically, the car hailing app congratulates him for successfully completing the mission, and there was no negative comment at all. As a result of a job well done, the system rewarded him and instructed him to go to the management office of Haiti Financial Building the next day to get the reward, transfer letter, real estate certificate, and other documents. Yang could not help but be surprised by this. We are soon introduced to a changed Yang Chen. He is now a wealthy and popular individual. He is described as the king of entertainment circles and medical skills. Not only that but also people call him investing god, artistry talented and possess various and all kinds of skills. He had become a king with people working for him as well as he being in control of a lot of things. The cause and source of Chen's dismissal from his office and sudden wealth is now fully revealed. We are taken back to the day that he was dismissed from his place of work. Chen used to work for Zing Long, Yin City Financial Building. On the day he was fired, he had been arguing with his boss, Zhang Jingyan, about a project he had planned all by himself but was not given the permission to sign his name and get a commission. His boss reminded him that he works for the company and whatever he produces belongs to the company which was under his control. Yang was offended by this as he felt that the company was like a vampire draining them of their hard work. After leaving the boss's office, he went to his desk and started packing. His office colleague warns him against going against their impulsive boss. They reminded him of his girlfriend who has a paralyzed dad that needed to be taken care of. He took a look at his and his girlfriend's picture and was reassured by the car and the house his parents had left him after passing away. He packs out of the office with the intention to start an online car hailing service. As he was approaching his car in the company garage his day got worse. His girlfriend broke up with him over a text message. Her reason being that she can't be with someone who cannot appropriately take care of her, and that she had gone to follow her dreams. He tried calling her but was not accessible. We are taking to where he decides to go for the car hailing system. He arrived at the location for his first order and realized that the customer was just applying her makeup and would need a period of 20 minutes to finish up. Infuriated by this action, Jang lashed out at her. He told her to get ready next time before ordering a cab. The lady asked for more minutes requesting he must not cancel the order else she would give a bad review. Not caring about her threat, he cancelled the order. True to her word, the lady left an awful review. Suddenly, there was a magical lady who appeared before him. The magical lady confirms that the host has been detected and the binding condition meets. The lady explained to him that a bad review also has a reward and needs confirmation to get it. She explained that as long as the binding was successful there will be rewards for every time he gets a bad review. Although he still needs a few good ones to remain in the business. The reward ranges from money, properties, luxury cars to skills. He immediately accepts the binding. The magical lady kissed him as the binding. The bad review system and the host are successfully bounded. She advised him to look for bad reviews. Since Jang had received a complaint, he was rewarded with a 28% stake in a very luxurious hotel All Island Hotel Group making him the second largest shareholder. The owner has invited to dine together where all transfer of equity agreement will be delivered to the owner. Jang was surprised to see the reward being given immediately. She wishes him good luck. Almost immediately, he received an order request which he accepted immediately as the location was the All Island Hotel Group. This is an opportunity for him to visit the island. He met the lady, his client by the roadside and inquired from her if she is the passenger with order ID 8043, she replied to him with a yes, and he asked her to enter the car. When she enters, they begin the silent ride. 
on their way to the location. Wang Jiayi, who is the passenger, asks him why he keeps peeking at her through the mirror, referring to her by name as Beauty. He asks her if she doesn't know how to drive, telling her that he isn't looking at her through the window, but he is looking at the road condition behind him. Feeling insulted by the question about her driving skill, she gets angry. She asks him why he insulted her with that kind of reply when all she did was ask him a question. In retaliation to his remark about her, she told him he's very slow when it comes to driving and has no driving skills. Rather than exchanging words with her, with a smirk on his face he stepped on the accelerator and started to drive a very full speed which began to scare Wang. Knowing fully well he is driving roughly because of the way she has spoken to him, she begins pleading for her life to which he still refuses to drive any slower. Almost in tears, she held support inside the car so she wouldn't fall. She pleaded with him, acknowledging that she was really wrong. She starts screaming for help. She gets very scared that he would kill them with that speed rate. Calling him brother, she continues to plead with him. He asks her who her brother is, and he tells her it is only if he doesn't end up in an accident that she will leave that car alive. But he tells her that he can at least let her go alive if she calls her by the term daddy. He was clearly enjoying himself as he tortures her and plays with her emotions. She reluctantly calls him daddy still in tears and shock. He comments that she is now behaving like a good girl, and he steps on the brake to allow her out of the car when they arrive at her destination. He tells her that they have arrived at all the island hotels and he should get out of the car. She comes out in tears and calls him a bastard. She tells him to wait and see if she wouldn't give him a bad review, then lays a complaint about him before calling the police to arrest him for dangerous driving. She indeed lays a complaint about him, and Yang gets a notification on his bad review portal that he has gotten another bad review. The portal congratulates him and tells him that he will be rewarded with the ownership of the Zing Long Finance Building. This is the building he was formerly working at and has just been sacked from. His system tells him that he should go to the management office of the Zing Long Finance Building to receive the transfer letter, real estate certificate, and the other documents of the building. He jumps happily. He is glad that he is getting the Zing Long Finance Building because that is the same building he used to work in before. He feels he can now settle the old grudges that he has with his former boss, Zhang, happily. He walks into the hotel like a boss and with a shoulder high. The first person he came across was very shocked to see him in the building. She is Zhang Wang, the same lady who he had almost killed in the car. She assumes that he is stalking her and asks him how he could dare to follow her around. She says that he really has a lot of nerve. He takes a very good look at her before proceeding to mock her. He calls her a good girl and even refers to himself as a third person calling himself her father. This he said referring sarcastically to what had happened earlier. He tells her that he has a spot reserved for himself in the building for a long time. The receptionist of all island hotels attends to him. She tells him that his seat is at table 8 and their staff will take him to his seat. Before he goes there, the attendant hands over a document to him, and he sees the equity agreement. The attendant tells him it's another document that their manager would like to pass on to him, so he should keep the document. She tells him that she will take him to his table now. Wang sees that he is a person of great status, and she tells him that even if she had misunderstood his intention in the car, she would never forgive him for what he has done to her but Jang could only care less. The attendant takes him to his table and tells him his meal will soon be ready. Wang waits there as well. She is in the building for a blind date and she is waiting for her date. Her date eventually arrives, and she asks him if he is Mr. Zhang Wang. He stretches his hands toward her and confirms to her he is Zhang. He also asks to confirm if she is Miss Wang, who has been introduced to him by the director. He politely asks her to take her seat. Looking at them, Yang could defer that they are on a blind date. As he sits and waits for the manager of his company while sipping out of his coffee, he sees his ex-girlfriend, Zhao Feifei, together with her best friend, Chen Xin, coming inside of the hotel with a man old enough to be their father in their midst. The duo were each clinging to the arm of the man. The pot-bellied old man is Master Li. He was amazed at the coincidence. Chen Xin cites him as well and requests permission from Master Li to go say hi to him under the pretense that he's a friend. She knows quite well the relationship between them and felt he was up to no good since he could not be in the building for any other reason. She goes to Yang and confronts him. She proceeds and tells him that he is going too far and he has broken up with Zhu Feifei already, and therefore he should leave the poor girl alone, referring to her friend. She asks him what he is doing at that hotel asking him if he is there to cause havoc. However, he tells her that he isn't going that low with them. He says he has no interest in gold-digging girls and asks if they aren't ashamed that they are in their early 20s and they are spending time with men in their 40s and 50s who are old enough to be their father. 
he tells her how sorry he feels for their parents. Chan Xin gets angry. She screams at Jiang Chen making Li realize that the conversation isn't going on like a conversation between friends. He moves closer to ask Chen Xin what is going on. She assures him that all is okay and he should go sit down. She informed him that she will meet them soon. Li feels concerned. He says he can see they are having a bad conversation, and he doesn't think it is okay. So he asks Yang who he is. Yang introduces himself as Zhu Feifei's ex-boyfriend. He further tells Li that Zhu Feifei had just broken up with him on that very day. He asks Li when he linked up with his girlfriend and asks him if he isn't a male mistress. Li concentrates on Zhu Feifei and asks her if Yang is right. She tells Li that she hasn't just broken up with Yang. She claims that she has broken up with him for a long time but he did not just agree. She includes that he is the fool that is just realizing the breakup on that day. She tells Li that she has told him she isn't interested and he has just refused to agree. She says that she indeed broke up with him again on that very day, but she didn't expect that he would follow her to the All Island Hotel. She says that Yang is just there to bully her. All this she said with much innocent and tears in her eyes making Li. Li holds her by her neck and sweetly laughs at her telling her it was not her fault and would get him out of the building. He gradually walks towards and asks Yang to leave. He tells Yang that he is pestering his girlfriend and that he is annoying. If only they know that Yang isn't there for any of them. Li feels it's about time he shows Yang that he is his boss at that place. He calls the waiter telling her that she should call the company manager, Manager Chen, because he wants to speak to him. The waiter does as she has been instructed immediately. Zhu Feifei also feels she has an upper hand in the situation on ground. She speaks to Yang asking him if he should just leave the hotel now that the matter is still minor because if he doesn't leave immediately he will have to suffer for it later. Yang doesn't listen to them. He keeps drinking his tea without being bothered about all that they are saying. Wang Jiang who is witnessing the whole scenario looks at him and calls him a weirdo in her mind. She wonders how the event will eventually play out. She says that since the situation has come to that which she has been trying to avoid, she will also like to see how the situation will end. I'm sure you want to see how it will end too. Wang's date. Mr. Zhang sees that she is interested in what is going on around Zhang Chen's table. He asks Wang if Wang knows Yang. Wang tells her date that she doesn't know him, but she just came to the building through his car hailing taxi. She narrates her experience with her date. She tells him that not only did Yang have a very bad attitude but he also almost killed her by driving recklessly. He also ensures she calls him daddy before he allows her to leave the car. So she got out of the car and gave him a bad review. Her date, Zhang, gets angry and he asks how Yang could dare do something that horrible to a stranger. He says that Yang is too much and he deserves to be dealt with. He tells Wang to remain on their chair, and he will go over to Yang and teach him a lesson. However, Wang drags him back. She tells him that he doesn't have to be that impulsive, but he refuses her words and still went ahead to Zhang's table as well to deal with him even though Wang had told him in the purest of heart. He gets to Yang, calls him brother and confirms from him whether Wang came inside his online taxi, and he bullied the poor girl. Yang doesn't bother denying what he has done. He doesn't even feel like he has done anything wrong. He looks at Jiang with annoying looks telling him that he really did all that and inquired to know who he was. Jiang introduces himself as Jiang Long telling him that he is Wang's blind date, and that if he tells Wang that he is sorry and calls her aunt, he will spare him from the punishment of his offense. He continues and tells Yang that if he doesn't do as he has been asked, he will have him thrown out of the hotel immediately. However, Yang simply drinks his coffee with so much attitude asking Jiang who his father is. Well, when your father is really something, you will really find it easy to answer the question of who your father is. So the question doesn't pose so much of an issue to Jiang. He tells Yang that his father is the chairman of Tianmu Investment, and he is also about to invest in the All Island Hotel Group. This he says with a lot of boldness. He threatens that he can inquire and asks the hotel to blacklist Yang from the hotel if Yang doesn't do as he has commanded him to do as he is capable of withdrawing his father's investment in the company. Yang is now faced with two opposing individuals who want him out. He tells Zhang that, just like Li, they are both there to show him what they are really made of making him very interested. The manager eventually arrives, running at Mr. Li. He asks Li why Li didn't tell him in advance that he wants to come over for dinner. This indicates that Li was a shotgun to the company. Then when he sees Zhang Tu, he recognizes Zhang. He compliments that it is like that day is a great day as two great people are at the hotel at the same time to eat their dinner. Li explains to Chang the manager that the day is his girlfriend's birthday, and they have decided to come for dinner at the spur of the moment. However when they arrive at the hostel, they find his girlfriend's ex-boyfriend at that same hotel and he is pestering her so much that they can't even eat in peace. He tells Chang that he hopes Chang will help them get rid of the pest in the hotel referring to Jack. 
Jiang also lays his complaint. He tells Chang that he has come there for a blind date with his date, but he found out that his date was bullied on her way to that hotel by the skinny Yang. He says he is also in favor that Chang should get rid of Yang because he doesn't want to see Yang again. Chang knows how much both clients mean to the company. They are great clients of the company. Chang is more than ready to send away anyone who is a hindrance to them. He tells them that whoever offends them will surely be taken care of. They both immediately point the accusing finger at Yang telling Chang that he is the one who had offended them. Yang is intense, he understands he has control of that situation. And whoever they are, they are below his feet as the second highest equity shareholder of that company. As they point at him, Chang recognizes him as their new shareholder that the board had just sent out to announce. He knows he can't favor Zhang and Li over their company's new shareholder. Instead of commanding the security to send Yang away from the hotel, he calls the security to send both Li and Zhang away from the hotel. While Li and Zhang are still shocked, he commands the security that they shouldn't let Li and Zhang into the hotel again even in the future as they are no longer welcome in the hotel. Li asks him again if he understands what he is saying. He asks if he has heard right. He reminds Chang that he is their hotel's vegetable food supplier. Zhang also brags about his family's rights. He asks Chang if they are sure that they no longer need his family's investment. To make them understand exactly what is going on, he needs to let them know who they have offended. He tells them he will like to formally introduce them to Mr. Yang Chen, the second largest shareholder of the All Island Hotel Group. Yang sits majestically on the chair, still sipping his coffee. He comments that Mr. Chang really knows his stuff. The statement about Yang's position blows over everyone's heads. Shocked was an understatement to how they feel. He is indeed the second largest shareholder. Wang wonders what is going on. She had just met Yang when he was driving an online taxi. She wonders how the second largest shareholder of a great company like the All Island Hotel Group is driving an online taxi. She concludes he is just a rich kid who feels like experiencing all that life has to offer to him. She feels that is the reason why he was that rude to her and why he speaks so viciously. Young doesn't want to let go of his opportunity to shine too. He tells Li that he won't be needing to supply vegetable food to their hotel in the future. And for Zhang, their hotel will no longer need his family's investment, and they won't accept such an investment. He commands Chang to throw everyone there away because he doesn't want to see them. Fei Fei also sees how rich he is now. The major reason she had broken up with him before was that he was poor, and it seems like things have now changed for the better for him. She regrets her decision asking herself what she was thinking when she decided to break up with him. She thinks of what to do. He is now richer than she expects, and she doesn't want to let things go like that, and she considers if it's possible for her to beg for his forgiveness and go back to him. She feels it's better to be ashamed of that place than allow such a rich man to leave her life. She immediately gets on her knees to beg him. She tells him that she knows she was wrong when she broke up with him, and all she had just allowed Lee to do to her was hold her hand. She hasn't allowed him to have any intercourse with her and she has nothing with him. She begs Yang and tells him that her body and her mind still belong to him and she has never left him. Her best friend, Kao Zin, doesn't want her to have that kind of fortune again, so she counters everything Zhu Feifei has said. She tells Yang that Zhu Feifei isn't a good woman for him and Zhu Feifei is just a young girl who loves vanity. She also wants him to date her, so she tells Yang that he should look at her. She is a young girl who is still clean, and he should come for her instead. He looks at them ridiculously, looking at how their stupid friendship ended, and says that they are about to start a bitch fight. Lee also knows his business will suffer so much loss if he stops supplying vegetables to a company as high as big as the All Island Company, so he tries to apologize too. He tells Yang that he didn't know that Zhu Feifei is Yang's ex-girlfriend. He says that if he had known, even if God had given him a hundred guts, he wouldn't have used the guts to compete with a man as great as Yang. They are all filled with regrets, and they all try to pacify him in ways that matter to them, but he doesn't care. He hits his cup of tea on the table, asking manager Chang why he hasn't done as he has commanded and kicked those people out of the hotel. Chang immediately heeds to his command. He calls out to security and asks them what their job is, and they should do their job by sending those people out of the hotel. Chen Zio still struggles with security. She tells him that she can explain what has happened to him. Li also screams and begs that he is wrong and Yang should forgive him. Chang feels reluctant to send Zhang away because he felt scared of what might be done to him if he did so. He whispers to Yang that Zhang is the son of the chairman of Tainam Investment, but Yang refuses to accept. He says that the investment won't get past the board as long as he is against it, and he asks what Chang is afraid of Zhang for. Since Yang has reassured Chang that there is nothing Zhang can do, Chang calls security to get rid of Zhang, too. He tells security they should blacklist Zhang and never allow him into their company again. 
Zhang refuses to accept that something that horrible can happen to a noble like him. He screams at the security and tells them not to touch him. He tells Chang that Chang should get his facts straight and he reminds everyone there that he is Zhang, the son of the chairman of Tainmu Investment. He says that a mere second largest shareholder of All Island Hotel Group isn't someone that they at Tainmu will even put in their sight. He drags his date and tells her they should eat at a different place. Yang has evil thoughts. He feels he should have made Zhang go through humiliating things, and despite all that he has made him go through, Zhang didn't forget to call on Wang and even tell her that they should attempt eating at a different restaurant. He assumes that Zhang has taken a liking to Wang, and if he is unable to hurt Zhang by what he has done at that hotel then he will try to steal Wang from him so he will see if Zhang will still be as proud of himself as he is. He then calls out for Wang. He asks her who she is on a blind date with. He plucks some flowers and tells her that he has flowers with him and she should sit and let them have a conversation. He says it seems like he had scared her with his jokes in the car earlier. He proceeds by saying he would like to apologize to her for the rude things he has done for her, so she should wait with him. Wang also considers going for him. She feels that since she is just going on a blind date with rich people, won't it be better for her to choose someone with a good personality and style? She turns and goes to meet Yang. She tells him that he seems sincere and he really wants to make amends, so she will give him a chance to make amends for what he has done since he is talking to her sincerely. She goes to take the flowers, leaving behind her real blind date. It looks like Zhang's composure evades him. He gets angry. He screams at Wang, asking her if she knows what she is doing at all. He reminds her that he is in that situation with Yang because he was trying to support and defend her and now she is leaving him for Yang who she dislike means that she is insulting him. She reminds him that he didn't do all he has done for her, but for him to save his face. She tells him that she didn't tell him to start a fight with Yang, and she reminds him that she even dragged him back so he wouldn't go to fight. But he had done there to pretend, and he failed. He gets angry at her, and he reminds her that it is Yang who is in a better position than him, and since he can't beat Yang, he thinks he can beat her. He tells her that if she dares sit down and have dinner with Yang, then she is shaming him. He asks her what she thinks will happen if she shames him. Instead of allowing her to listen to what Zhang has to say, Yang holds Wang by her back and tells her to sit down. He tells her that if a fly feels like he can disturb her, then he will get rid of the fly on her behalf so she can eat in peace. With all pride, she sits down and tells him thank you. Angrily, Zhang lifts his hand on her, but before his hand gets down to her, Yang holds Zhang's hands. He tells him it is uncouth for a man to lay his hand on a woman. Chang calls security, and he tells them that they should chase Zhang out of their hotel. They get there, and they hold Zhang with their hands. Before he leaves the hotel, he tells Wang that he wouldn't spare her for what she has done to him. He tells Chang that he will go back home and tell his father what they have done to him, and he is sure his father wouldn't let them go with what they have done to him. Yang returns to the table, and he pours a bottle of wine for Wang. He decides to formally introduce her to him. He tells her that his name is Yang Chen, and it is his pleasure for him to have that dinner with her. She also introduces herself. She apologizes for the bad review that she has kept for him and tells him that she will remove the bad review immediately after that date so they can both have a fresh start. However, he tells her not to worry. He says that the bad review will be his reminder of their special encounter and she doesn't need to remove it. He asks her to join him in the drinks, and they cheer. Other guests at the hotel who have witnessed what has happened talk and gossip about him. They feel what had happened was arrogant of the rich, and it was bad that he had directly snatched the blind date of the person who had picked a fight with him. The man sits and says that it is really a good thing to have money. Wang tries to know the level of riches of her present date. At least she had just left a man with generations of riches. She asks Yang what his family does. He tells her that his family had died several years ago, and he is now a car-hailing driver. He asks her what she does too. And she tells him that her hometown is Sioux City, and she currently works at a luxury shop. And the reason she had come to that blind date is that she wants to stay in that city. He doesn't feel bad that she is depending on a man before she can have a good life. He tells her that everyone has the right to pursue a better life and it is not a shame that a woman should rely on a man to give her a better life. Xiao, he feels that compared to Fei Fei, his ex-girlfriend, Wang is a little more sincere. She isn't the type who only only runs for money. She tells him that she thinks he is right about what he has said and asks that they keep drinking. As they drink, she asks him if he knows the reason she was so prejudiced against him when she got into the car. She explains to him that she had two blind dates today and the first person whom she met was very nice to her. However, as they get to know each other better, he tried to kiss her when it was dark in the cinema. She asks for his opinion about the issue and he tells her he thinks the major reason she felt like that towards the man is that she didn't just like him. 
he tells her that if she had taken a fancy to him before he did that act, there was no way she could have refused to kiss him. She has another opinion about the issue. She feels that is not the case with her, and it has nothing to do with being good-looking or not being good-looking. She asks him what kind of person kisses a girl on their first meeting. If she has allowed something like that, she is sure her second meeting with him will be more outrageous. However, he explains to her that kissing has nothing to do with the first or second meeting. He says that kissing depends on the atmosphere and the feeling they both have at that moment. He says that it is even possible to do more things on the first meeting as long as the atmosphere is right and the feeling is there. She doesn't want to believe that he means all that he is saying to her. She asks him how anyone can be willing to kiss another person on their first meeting. He stands up, he walks towards her and goes nearer to her lips. He plants a romantic kiss on her lips. He tells her that she should enjoy her meal and put the bills for the meal on his tab. He tells her that he is going to room 1208 to rest. She holds her lips. She can't believe that she has just allowed a random man to kiss her. She asks herself why she didn't resist him from kissing her, maybe he is right about kisses. She thinks about the fact that he has told her his room number, and she wonders if he had purposely told her the room number so he could invite her to his room. She feels ashamed about what she is thinking about. She couldn't imagine that she would feel that way about a random man. Meanwhile, in room 1208, Young goes inside and has a shower. After his shower, he comes out of the bathroom holding a towel. He hears a knock on the door, and he just goes to open the door forgetting that he is with an open chest and just a towel on his waist. When he opens the door to her, she immediately drags him closer and plants her kiss on his lips. She calls her name, but he doesn't resist her. He holds her on her waist, and when she finishes, her face turns red as she is overwhelmed by the entire situation. His eyes get to her chest, he sees the two open buttons around her chest, and he comments that it is so hot. He realizes that she had drunk too much when he left her, and he tells her that she is drunk. However, she really feels like touching him, she keeps touching him, and she touches his chest, and she sees his eight-pack abs. She really wants to feel that abs on her hands, and she says she can't help it. She tells him that he shouldn't blame her for what she is doing because he is the one that started it first when he kissed her. He carries her in his hands like a baby, and he enters the room. He puts her on the bed, and he holds her body as he plants another kiss on her lips. She screams and reacts back to all his touch. I'm sure you can assume how that night ended. The following day, he is still at the hotel. He wakes up late because of the night business. He checks beside his bed, and he sees that she is no longer there. He wonders if she has gone. He figures that she has gone, and he also tries to leave the bed. He sees that there is a blood stain on his bed. Blood stain after having intercourse with a girl has just one meaning. He really can't believe that is what is happening. He wonders if he is the one who has deflowered her, and he finds that she has left a letter for him in the room. He quickly goes to check the letter. In the letter, she tells him that he did well the night before and she is very pleased with him so she has decided to give him a service fee of 3000 for his service, and the fee is on the table. He can also see the money under the letter. She tells him that he shouldn't go out at all for the month. Instead, he should use the other days in the month to get his strength back. And when she gets paid the next month, she will come back and pack him in for a night again. He wonders what is going on, and he couldn't help but comment that women are very interesting. That day, he has just a purpose which is for him to go to his former work building, the Zing Long Finance Building, and claim his new property. He goes there and he meets with the receptionist. He introduces himself as Yang Chan telling her that he is there to collect his things. He is immediately directed to the manager, Manager Chan Chui, who welcomes him and introduces himself as the manager of the building office. Chan Chui tells him that he should give him a moment and he will get back to him with the property documents. He 